Hello, welcome back to a new video. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you some easy tips and tricks when you're beginning Power World. So Power World is quite a big open sandbox kind of game. It doesn't really do a lot of hand holding. So you might feel kind of lost in the beginning of the game. So today I'll show you some things that I wish I knew when I started the game just to make things go a bit more smoothly. Okay, so as you can see, I have a very busy settlement with lots of workers doing lots of different things. And what you have to do is you have to go out into the world and find different powers who can do different things so you can bring them back to your camp and either make them make food like these chickens make eggs and these fox things dig up these little power spheres now you're going to need a lot of power spheres to be able to capture the powers and you can create the power sphere at the workbench over here or at this one the sphere workbench and then you start off with the power sphere you got megasphere and also gigaspheres now you can just create these by grinding the materials but the easiest way to get loads of power spheres is you want to go and look for these fox looking creatures with the fluffy tails they're called vixies and they're really good because they'll dig up power spheres and also arrows and also gold so you chuck in a couple of the vixies into a ranch and they'll just constantly dig up all the power spheres you'll ever need and this one the green thing can dig up berries and i'll just give you a quick brief explanation of what they do so this fire one he can smelt things at the forge so when you get ores you can turn them into ingots using him and he can also cook food and then you've got water types that can do planting and harvesting so this monkey is spreading seeds and this thing is shooting water to water them so yeah we got like this ecosystem or this economy that's being run by all the different things. Now when you start off the game you won't have anything because you'll start off at level 1 and in the technology tree you'll just start off with the basic stuff and each level you go through you'll unlock new things so you can see I'm level 21. So my first tip would be you want to level up as quickly as possible to start unlocking everything. The fastest way to level up is by capturing pals not by killing them so if you just do a bit of damage or well that's a bit too much damage uh, that will kill them but what you really want to do is you want to go around I'm too high level to damage these you don't want to kill them you want to just damage them so you can capture them and once you've captured them you can take them back to your settlement so to capture them you just press Q and it will do the Pokemon kind of Pokeball capture thing and there's like a higher chance of them being captured if they're weak or low level so I captured that one and now I can either use him I can summon him by going through my summoned pal thing I've got this black cat thing which is pretty cool and then you can bring them back to the base now what you also want to do is you want to get a mounted pal the best mount is the Ethere deer so that it's really good because what you can do is hold F and then you can mount it and it's really fast like that and if you press the left mouse button you can do like this charged sprint attack which is really fast so yeah you really want to catch one of these deer things in the beginning early part of the game they can usually be found around this area they're not too hard to capture and they're a really good mount they can do a double jump as well and then what you also want to do is get a flying mount so I got this night wing flying mount so this can also be found around this area quite early on in the game and you can fly it takes stamina though so when you're flying you'll lose stamina and then it will drop back down to the ground now also look at the fast travel points over there that blue glowing thing that's very important because when you die you'll lose all your stuff and you'll start back at your base and then you have to run all the way to where you died to re gather your stuff so whenever you see these kind of wing things they are fast travel points and you want to try and go to them and activate them before you get into danger so you can easily recover your corpse. Now when you're flying around the open world sometimes you'll encounter these NPCs and they usually sell you something or they'll give you a tip or some information like that but don't attack them you can actually attack them which I found out earlier but the problem is when you attack them you'll get a wanted level kind of like GTA and these really high level powerful guards will come after you they're like level 30 and they're basically impossible well nearly impossible to kill and the only way to get rid of them is by dying you can run away but they'll just keep following you forever until they catch you so just die and then they'll disappear and leave you alone and to be able to mount rideable creatures you need to have a saddle 
And to make the saddle, you'll need a PAL workbench. And this is where you can create different kind of equipment that you can use with your PALs. This is where you get machine guns for certain PALs and different kind of gloves and saddles. So the earliest level where you can actually mount a PAL is, I think it's level six. Yeah, you can get the rush or saddle. And then at level 12, you get the deer saddle. And then at level 15, you get the nightwing saddle so you can fly. So that's pretty useful. Also, another trick with the deer is if you ride into enemies, you can actually do a tiny bit of damage if it will actually follow me. I'll show you. So if you just ride it into, into enemies, if I can, oh, there's some chickens. If you ride it into them, it'll do a tiny bit of damage like that. Not enough damage to accidentally one-shot them. And then you can just easily capture them, round them up like that. Capture them. Get some easy XP. XP points. You get the best XP points when you start capturing the pals. And that's really the only way to level. You do get a tiny bit of XP points from mining and killing stuff. But you get the most from just capturing pals. So you'll end up with loads of pals in your pal index or whatever it's called. And then some pals like this monkey can actually have a machine gun with its special ab ability. If you hold F, it will start whipping out this machine gun shooting random things. Which is not very good because it's, it's just shooting at nothing, isn't it? And you also got this one, the leaf monk. Oh, it's shooting at those things now. So you can capture those for some XP points. And then this leaf monk thing can actually sit on your head and then you can use it to shoot a machine gun, which is pretty funny. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of guns in this game. If you look at the technology tree, your first gun, you unlock at 21, level 21, you get the musket. And then later you get stuff like handgun, rifles, machine guns. I think the max level is level 50. You actually get a missile launcher, rocket launcher. You get some pretty cool weapons if you really focus on leveling up. So it really makes leveling up something you feel like you really want to do because every time you level up you get at least six new technologies to play around with every level. So every level uh, you get some pretty cool stuff to unlock. Plus you can enhance your stats for your character which is quite useful to increase stuff like stamina, the amount of weight you can carry, the amount of health and defense points you have. Okay, next I'll show you some tips on how to get a good economy up and running and which powers to use for the best advantages. So you want to get a ranch and I usually put a chicken in there to create eggs and I put some vixies so they can create power spheres and also dig up arrows. Look at all this stuff over here they've dug up. Look at that, that is insane. They dropped gold, power spheres, look at all the arrows, don't have to make this stuff anymore. It's great. And that black cat, if you put him in the ranch, he'll just dig up gold constantly so you can buy stuff at the merchants. And then that one is good for the fireplace and the furnace for smelting stuff. And then you got these mining, what are they called? Like a mining area where you can just mine stone indefinitely. And you got these cat, well, he looks kind of sad. I feel kind of bad sometimes, like enslaving these things and forcing them to do manual labor. But anyway, they can do mining and they'll just mine stuff. And then the deers will start chopping wood. So you've got this wood lumber mill, you've got the stone mill, and they'll just create lumber and stone indefinitely, which is pretty useful. And then you also have farms. So you've got berry farms and they'll need planters and waterers. So you've got monkeys they can spread seeds and then you need water plant things, water type things to plant. And you also need beds because they need to rest. And later you can get uh, wheat fields. And then you got this breeding station. So you pick up two pals, throw them in, and then you gotta make them a cake. Now making the cake is kind of annoying. You got a cake here, it needs a lot of things like honey, egg, milk, red berries and flour. Getting the honey, you gotta go to this place I found that this area here, where is it? Here, over the bridge and around there, you get these things called moths, sinner moths, and they drop honey. And I tried capturing one and bring it back to the ranch to see if it could make honey, but it can't. So you need to go and grind those, get honey, and then get milk and all the other stuff from the merchant. And then you can make a cake, and then you put two things in there and breed them, and they'll actually create some kind of interesting pal. So I did it before, I combined a chicken and a Vixie and they actually made an egg which gave me this black cat which is quite an unusual pal. 
So if you go over to the plant, I mean the power box management menu, press V, you can see what you need to do to level up the base. My base is level 12 and you need to build this thing to be able to get to the next level. And every time you get a new level, you'll unlock a slot for how many powers at the base you can have. So I currently have all these powers working and there's so many powers you can choose from. I mean, look at this, it's insane. You really got to pick and choose carefully. So you want some powers making food. So you got the chickens making eggs. You got this cap capra tea making berries. You got this do mud watering stuff. And then I got these cativers just doing manual labor and random odd jobs. You've got this fox parks doing the fire for the ingots and the cooking. And then you got these two vixies creating power spheres. Now I am kind of lacking in lumber so the deers can chop down lumber but i've got loads spark it's generate electricity these can also do water stuff and if you click on it press f you see the work suitability you can see what they can do so you've got kindling planting handiwork gathering farming cooling so you have to look at this see what they can do and then see what you need to be done like food production i need some food actually now so right click on that just double click onto your character to eat some berries and you got this food crate thing here you can put food into it and your pals will just come and eat at it when they're hungry so if you have the right pals doing the right things you'll have a fully sustainable encampment or camp place where it's just generating all the materials you'll need oh and one little tip when you've got the paraglider you can glide like this but it's a bit slow if you want to do a really fast power glide when you're going downhill sprint and then slide and then jump and look how fast you can go you're basically just flying but i don't have much stamina so i can't go very far but the speed on that is just crazy and then just capture some random things like that well let me capture it there see how much xp points i get even from capturing this one which is quite low level i got oh, i only got 17 it's a bit too low level for me I probably have to go to a higher level place. So when you want to do fast traveling, you got to find, you see on the top, there's like a little radar compass thing. If you go towards the little icon, that would be a fast travel point. So the fast travel points over there. So we do a sprint, power glide over to it. And then I'll show you what you can do on the map. So on the map, you can choose where to go. So I've been to quite a lot of places. There's a boss here I can do, but they're quite tough. Could do try one boss. So there's some kind of event here, sealed realm of the frozen wings. Oh, I've tried doing this before. It's like this penguin and he just spams you with a load of ice attacks. So you can enter the dungeon. That was quite a while ago. I'm a bit more stronger now, so maybe I can do it. Where is he? So I want to summon my cat. I don't know which power to use for this boss. Well, that did a lot of damage. Oh my god, he just one-shot my defensive shield. Now I'm stuck in the wall. This is not going well. Yeah, these boss fights can be pretty tough. You really got to be... I don't think my black cat is very good for this boss fight. If you hide behind stuff, you can usually cheese the boss somehow. Why is he... The cat is really bad. Yeah, I'm probably going to die here. Oh my god. So when you die, it's kind of annoying because you drop everything. And first you got to wait five seconds and then you got to respawn. And then you can only really respawn back at your base. And then you've got to go and find where you died. You'll be completely back to the beginning with no stuff in your inventory. So you go fast travel, find where you died, which was over here. Travel back to it. It's kind of frustrating to be honest. I think in the settings you can adjust the difficulty level and make it so when you die you don't drop all your stuff. I might do that just to try and speed stuff up. So then you go all the way back and collect your stuff. Okay, now I switched out my power with the Lil Lif Monk. And he's doing way better. Look, he's destroying the boss now. He's actually holding aggro, which the black cow was not doing. Okay, that was way easier. 
So if you kill the boss, you get an ancient technology points. And with the ancient technology points, you can actually unlock these purple technologies, which are pretty cool, like uh, egg incubator, feed bag, grappling gun. What else do I have? Average feed bag. So you get some pretty cool stuff with the ancient technologies. Actually, I could have captured this with a power sphere, but I accidentally killed him. So that's one thing to notice when you're doing the bosses. Sometimes you can actually capture the bosses, but if you accidentally kill them, then you can't capture them. So that was a bit stupid of me to do that. Oh, it actually revives. So in 58 minutes, it says the boss will revive and then you can do it again and capture it if you fail to capture it the first time. So that's pretty interesting. And then if you see smoke coming from the distance like this, it probably means there's some kind of settlement over there. So we're going to take our Nightwing and attempt to fly over there and check out what is actually over there so I can show you. Oh, and you see that little green thing over there? If you collect those, you'll get this effigy green thing. And then you take it to a church and then you can actually upgrade certain things about your character or your powers. I'll show you that in a minute. So we arrived at the smoke, you can see it's a massive camp with these free power alliance devouts. So there's NPCs, there's the syndicate, and there's also these free power alliance devoutee people. So you can attack the base and then free the power that's been captured in this cage. So I'll just, these guys are glitching out for some reason. The AI is kind of rubbish in this game sometimes. I did one of the bosses, it was like a massive electric yellow Pikachu looking boss, and he just got stuck on a pillar. And I killed him without even taking any damage because my pal just shot him in the back whilst he was stuck on the pillar thing, <laughs> which is pretty funny. Maybe I'll use this guy, he's got better ranged abilities. So just take these guys out, They're pretty easy. It's a shame killing people doesn't really give you that much XP. It gives you some, but not as much as capturing stuff. We can actually use the machine gun thing like this. Well, something just one shot my defensive shield. Oh, did I tell you you can get a defensive shield? It's that little blue thing above the green bar. It's pretty useful. Why am I... Why is my pal not doing anything? He's just standing there. So to fix that, maybe respawn him. Uh, finally, he's helping. <laughs> the game does do weird stuff sometimes, I have to say. So you take these guys out. Eventually. They are five levels above me, so that's why. It's taking a bit of time. They also drop a lot of gold and ammunition and stuff like that. So then we can free this thing in the cage. And I think it will join your team. You can take it back to your ranch. Yeah, I captured it. So the smoke indicates a camp where you can capture something that's in a cage. Oh, there's actually a fast travel thing here as well. Oh, this moth thing is going to drop honey. I need honey. Uh, it doesn't drop stuff if you don't kill it. If an NPC kills it, it doesn't drop anything. Okay, my inventory keeps getting full as well. Very annoying. So we get the fast travel, I take you to the church. There was a church here. Desolate church, and there's also... I thought there was another church. This is the only church I know of. So if you go to the church and take your effigy points, you'll see this big statue thing here. And then you can enhance your capture power. I think other churches allow you to enhance other powers. But capture power is pretty useful. And then you can also enhance your powers. So if you want to enhance, I think my favorite is the Lift Monk. You can enhance his attack using, I don't know what they're called, these little blue things. Power Souls. So you can increase his attack a bit more. I'll just max out his attack. And then they also have these passive skills. Like my one has. 
muscle head attack plus 30 percent so that's why he's so strong so he's got like 40 percent attack bonuses now 